What's up guys, this is Massey. Uh, this video I want to show you what is the common ion effect. So in the beginning I will talk about Le Chatelier principle and then I will talk about the common ion effect and at the end we will have some examples. So as you remember the Le Chatelier principle is saying that when a chemical system is at equilibrium, when it is disturbed by a change in properties such as changing the pressure in gas phase reactions or changing the temperature for exothermic or endothermic reaction or when we increase the concentration of one of the reactant or product the system adjusts in a way that opposes the change for example when we are at equilibrium if you increase the concentration of one of the reactants, the reaction will shift to the right, which means that it shifts to the product side. On the other hand, if we increase the concentration of one of the products, the, the equilibrium shifts to the left hand side, which will be the reactant side, to oppose to the change, to make a new equilibrium. So now, let's see what is the common ion effect. Consider a saturated solution of sol silver chromate, Ag2CrO4, in aqueous solution in equilibrium with a small quantity of undissolved silver chromate. So we will have this equilibrium reaction here. We have Ag2CrO4 solid phase, gives 2 Ag plus in aqueous solution and chromate in aqueous phase as well. So now we may use Le Chatelier principle to predict what happens if we add a few drops of silver nitrate solution. So silver nitrate is AgNO3 and is aqueous solution. We, if we add it to this equilibrium mixture, silver nitrate solution contains silver ion, which is Ag+, plus, and nitrate ions, which is NO3-. minus. Since they are not part of this equilibrium system, the nitrate ions will not affect the equilibrium position. However, an additional silver ions will increase the concentration of silver ions in solution, which means that we are increasing the concentration of one of the product, which in this case is silver. So since we increase the concentration of one of the product, the reaction shifts, the equilibrium shifts to the left. So sh shift the equilibrium to the left toward the reactant side. And this leftward equilibrium shift may cause solid silver chromate to precipitate. So a precipitate will form only if the new concentration of aqueous silver ions and chromate ions push the equilibrium system past the solubility limit represented by the solubility product constant that we call it KSP. So this phenomenon is called the common ion effect. Why? Because we have two different solutions and both of them has silver ion in this case. So we increase by adding silver nitrate, we increase the concentration of silver. So that's why the equilibrium shifts to the left and we will have more precipitate. You can also see it in this figure. On the left hand side, we have the silver chromate and its ions. The solution of silver chromate is in equilibrium with solid silver chromate. And in B, when silver nitrate is added to the solution, an extra silver ion shifts the equilibrium to the left, causing more silver chromate to precipitate. So the equilibrium shifted to the left because the saturated silver chromate solution and the silver nitrate solution both contained aqueous silver ions. We could expect a similar result if we added a solution that contained chromate ions. In general, we can predict that adding a solution that contains a common ion will shift the solution equilibrium system toward the solid and may cause some of the ions to precipitate from solution. Lowering the solubility of an ionic compound by the addition of a common ion is called the common ion effect. The 
Common ion effect doesn't occur only in solutions of substances with low solubility. Even highly soluble substances also demonstrate this common ion effect. So in summary, the common ion effect is a reduction in the solubility of an ionic compound due to the presence of a common ion in solution. Let's see this example. Acidic solutions containing common ions. You need to calculate the concentration of proton and the person dissociation of HF in a solution containing one molar HF with Ka 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 and one molar NaF. In a solution containing one molar HF and one molar NaF, the major species are HF. Why? Because HF is hydrofluoride acid is not a strong acid it is a weak acid so it is not going to dissociate completely so at equilibrium we have both undissociated and dissociated form so we have hf fluoride sodium ion and we have water we know that na plus ions have neither acidic nor basic properties and that water is very weak acid or weak base because it's an amphoteric substance and why sodium ion have neither acidic nor basic properties because that's the conjugate acid of a strong base and doesn't have any affinity to to mix with hydroxide therefore the important species are hf and fluoride which per participate in a acid dissolution equilibrium that controls proton concentration so we write the equation it's hf gives proton and fluoride and we can write ka ka equals to proton times fluoride concentration divided by hf and ka is known then after that because we are dealing with equilibrium we need to form an ice table for ice table we need to write the initial concentration and equilibrium concentration the initial concentration of hf is one the initial concentration of fluoride is one because because it's coming from naf it's from dissolved sodium fluoride and the initial concentration of proton is neglected because it's very very small coming from the water molecule at equilibrium we will have one minus x for HF and we have for fluoride because it's the product is going to be 1 plus X and proton is going to be X as well so we just sub it in in the formula we had in the previous slide we just sub all this number for equilibrium concentration so we have 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 equals to X times 1 plus X divided by 1 minus X so since the the value for Ka is much smaller than the initial concentration of acid which we call it 100 rule is at least 100 times bigger than Ka so we can neglect the x values and we can assume that 1 plus x is approximately equal to 1 and same thing for 1 minus x that's going to be equal to 1 as well so the whole ratio is going to reduce to just x so x will be equal to 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 and after that we can find the pH as well using the equation for pH and after that we can find the dissociation percentage which is going to be proton divided by initial concentration of HF times 100 so it will be 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 divided by 1 times 100 that will be 0.072 percent